Oh, hey guys, fancy seeing you here. How you doing? Uh, you know, on that one video, I don't remember if actually it was a video or a live stream, but I mentioned that it'd be fun to go through some of the different positions, roles on a film set, commercial shoot, whatever filmmaking shoot. There's so many different roles. I thought it'd be interesting to go through them and we can do that actually today. And my friend Mark Bone is coming over and he actually knows a lot more about these different roles because he still shoots commercials, so he would be able to shed light on this a little bit more. I think that's him actually. Hello? Hey! hey oh, dude. hey, man. Was, it said no visitors. <laughs> <laughs> Good to sure see this... you, man. Yeah, how you doing? It's been a while. Yeah, how long has it been? All right, I, I need your help. Uh, I have this video idea and I think you're the expert for it. I want to talk about the different roles on a film set. I want to, I want to teach these guys because there's so many different roles, right? And I think you're better at this than I am. Uh, do you want to help? I'll, I'll do my best. I feel like I've worked a lot of different roles in my life in list, film. List, list some roles. What have you okay, done? What have I've you done? done? I've been a data manager. I literally was taking memory cards and putting them onto hard drives on set. Uh, I've been Solid. a PA. I've been a camera assistant. I'll, we'll tell you about what a PA is. Yeah, I've been a camera assistant. I've been clapper loader. That is a fun job, it's an old job. There's, that's not too common now. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> and then I've been a DP, and I've been a director. I've also been an editor. Nowadays you're a director, right? Yeah, nowadays Direct I mostly stick to directing. So can you help me out? Yes, but I have one request, Maddie. What's this request? I've never ridden a boosted board. You're there in the videos all the time doing your thing. I will one-up that. I will teach you how to ride a one wheel. One life, man, one wheel. Let's do it. <laughs> all right, let's try it out. Lean forwards. Whoa. Whoa. The future. I'm in the future, Maddie. <laughs> Boom. You got it. Anticlimactic <laughs> ending. <laughs> But how fun is that? It's like, it's kind of like fun. surfing or snowboarding. Yeah, I totally get why you guys just ride around on all the time. <laughs> it, it, it serves multiple purposes. It's a good like filmmaking tool to get from one place to another, but it's also just super fun. So yeah. Anyways, let's get to get to what we're, we're doing here. All right, so, so let's talk uh, roles on a film set. Well, really there's like, like we could talk film sets, we could talk commercial sets, documentary, and documentary indie, like they're all totally different. Like, I don't know what I'm wearing these sets. So not all of these roles that we're gonna go through are on every single set. Like, like for me, I'm shooting, editing, producing, I'm doing everything myself, sound, everything. Whereas then on the sets that you're working on, you got all sorts of people working. So I, I really want you guys to see that there's like a, a world full of, different opportunities for you. You don't even need to be good at filmmaking to be part of the filmmaking industry. So that's really cool, I think. Absolutely. And um, so, you know, we'll start from the top, Marty. And Let's so from the top. From the top. So I think one of the roles that you see always near the beginning of a film, and people don't actually know always what it means, is the executive producer. The executive producer. It sounds very high and mighty. It is does. It? It, 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 it is. It is, but in some ways, they don't necessarily have all the creative decision. It depends the project, it depends the person. But I've had executive producers on some of my projects that have no filmmaking background. Yeah. They just have money. <laughs> so they get the executive so, producer so role. So if you have money, you can be an executive producer yes. right now. <laughs> That's not, one of the things. Yeah, it's not yeah. to downplay the role. No. They're, they're the overseer. They're, they often, people will come to an executive producer to get a project off the ground. The executive producer has big connections. They might be connected to a studio. It's a bit of a fluid role. They're like the big arms over the whole whole thing yeah. kind of making it happen. The next person in line, which often does a lot more work, not necessarily more work than the executive more producer, hands -on, but is though. more hands-on, 
is the producer. Yeah, so what's the difference between an exec executive producer and a producer? You'll hear people talking, were they associate producer, were they co-producer, right. were they producer, were they executive producer? To me, honestly, it can get a bit muddled, but in my experience, the producer is the next person down, they're the ones running the ship, they're the ones making the decisions, they have a lot of connections, and they'll run things through the executive producer, but you'll probably have a team of producers, and they get the project done, they're so vital to the project. Right. So executive producer is kind of, uh, this isn't cut and dry, but it's kind of like the guy at the office, he's got the money, the power, and then the producers are out on the ground making it happen. I'll say the producing world is some of the areas where I have the least experience in, so it does get a bit muddled for me. I'm sorry if I've offended any executive <laughs> producers or co-producers, associate producers. Do not take any offense. Yeah. We're idiots, or maybe I'm an idiot. <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm pretty stupid myself. What I know about the producing world is that producing is actually one of the most important skills or like one of the most universal skills because it's one of the few skills on a, on a film set that actually transcends filmmaking. Pretty much any industry needs producers. So if you want a really solid job that you know you're always gonna have work, I'd say go for a producer role. Like that's like one of the best, like. He's waiting for a plane. This is YouTube, it's fine. Oh really? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm on film, we wait for the plane. <laughs> You don't wait for the plane? This is YouTube. Okay, you, <laughs> we're not waiting for the plane. Keep rolling. So shut, on a film, shut up, sound guy. On a film set, the, the sound guy would be like, yeah. plane, plane, stop everything. And we would stop and we would wait. Oh, we, we would all sit here silently sit waiting. Here. And then he has his headphones and we're all waiting. And waiting. I hate that moment for the sound guy because he has like 50 people staring at him and he has his boom up. He's, up he's he, just listening. listening. Can and he finally, still hear the plane? Okay, we're good. Okay, okay, okay we're, we're good. Play. Okay. You guys can go. And then roll. the AD would yeah. say, roll, let's go. <laughs> and so that leads to, you're a director. Yes. You're, you do directing. I do directing. So as a director, my role on set is the creative direction of the project. Where is this project going? What story are we telling? And how am I going to craft everything around that story to make sure that my vision is being seen through the whole project? So executive producer kind of funds things, but a director is like, they're the ones with the vision, and yep. they're in charge of making that vision happen in the end. Exactly. Every role on set is to facilitate the vision of the director. Now, there's good collaboration. The director, most important role. And you mean <laughs> no? I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say at every role is yes so crucial. Yes, no. No. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know what I've noticed, Mati, is I've hit a ceiling at some at some points in my career as a director because I haven't been bringing other people on. Yeah. Oh, 100 percent. I'll on certain projects and certain stories when I don't collaborate with people who are better at me in certain areas, my project won't ever get to that next level. Yeah. I, when I started filmmaking, I, I I saw all these like credits and I'd be like, what the heck are all these people doing on set? And then I get on a commercial set and I'd be like. Why are there so many people here? Like, what are all these people gonna, I can do everything myself. But I realized how naive and stupid I was in like thinking that. Because the more you do it, the more you realize that everybody has a vital job and the more people there are, that just means that there's like more, more responsibility, more pressure, and we wanna make a better quality product. And you need all those people, all these different roles to do their jobs really well and that's how you end up with like something really, really good and you know, not just a YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube videos are good. YouTube videos are great. Um, no, and you're right, Mati, I wanted to say this, that I found early in my career, people would say, hey, do you direct in VP? And yes, I do, and so they would say, yeah, oh, you great. Can, you can do both you roles can do, at the oh, same time. At the same time, they'd be like, great, yeah, can you do that? So I was directing and DPing a lot of these shoots, and you'd often sometimes even be there, yeah. and you'd see me, you'd see me trying to switch between, oh, okay, am I directing, I'm doing yeah. an interview, and then looking over at the lighting. Yeah, and, and I would have to like, kind of help you with the DPing, but I wasn't the DP, I wasn't given that role, so then it was like this like, yeah, weird, be like, like yeah, and then weird. It, and then so it's this this muddling. I've learned that I like to do one or the other. Yeah. Now, in the case of Rescate, we teamed up and we both DP'd that. Documentary we did, uh, watch the roll video, clip, like, yeah. watch video now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so in that case, I was often by myself, so I had to DP, and that worked perfectly because I needed to be a small crew. Yeah. But when I'm on a bigger set, when I'm directing for Nike yeah. or Mercedes, I need a DP. I need someone to solely focus on the cinematography and get the image the way it needs to be. It, it's so different when you have like a client. There, there might be like 20 clients, so like people from the oh. actual brand, kind of like Kill me. breathing down your neck, and like there's a lot of pressure there. Like, it, like you know, they have a role to do. They're there for, but like it's totally different than when you're just DPing directly your own documentary and like you have all the power all the creativity totally. everything in your you know sp sphere of responsibility and power and on a, like a commercial it's it's a 
totally different game. Totally. And yeah. and one other little tidbit, as a director, some people think that you just show up on the day and you call the <laughs> shots. It's your most important no. work as a director. The most important work is beforehand, your pre-production, yeah. your planning, and knowing what your vision is. Sometimes yeah. I'll walk into shoot, I'm not totally sure how something will work out, but at least I have a plan. Because when you're on set and you have 50 people waiting for you to do something, you need to give them somewhere to go. Yeah. And moving forward is sometimes just a good thing to do because yeah. you'll find out what you need to do in that process. Yeah, you're the leader, and if you don't know what your direction is, what your vision is, then the whole thing is just gonna, everything mm. below you is going to fall apart and everybody's going to hate their lives, and you're probably not going to come up with a very good product in the end. Of, no, you know. which is why it's so important to have an assistant director. Right. So what's a, what's a, what's a first AD? A first AD, as they call it. Well, actually, when you see those old clips of movies and you see someone saying, action! Uh, sorry, when you... <laughs> I said it so... <laughs> Action! Action! That... Much more manly. Yes, much more manly. Those are actually usually the AD. It's so not, that is not the director yelling action. I maybe not, half the time on set call action, depending the shoot. It's very often my first AD who calls that. So the first AD, that's the first assistant director. His job is to coordinate and corral the crew. He's the one who's making sure that you're on time. He's the one who's making sure that you're, you're moving to the next scene. He's the one who's doing all the yelling so the director can be with his script. He can be working with the actors. He can be talking to the DP. The director can still be focusing on his vision. He doesn't have to focus on actually moving forward the giant machine of a film right. set. If, if the director has the heart and the vision of the project, the AD in some ways is a bit like the head, like calling the shots on, right. on how to make the crew happen. Now the AD won't necessarily have, well it's very rare that the AD has the creative influence, yeah. but once in a while when I'm working with a really good AD, they'll make suggestions and yeah, I'll collaborate yeah. with yeah. them. But their job is to make sure that we're on time. They're the, they have a stopwatch, um, they're making sure that we're on, on time, they're get, telling me as a director, they'll be like, hey, we have half an hour for this next scene. Yeah. They'll come up to the DP and they'll be like, hey, you only got 20 minutes more before yeah, get, we need to be rolling. Let's get this lighting yeah. guy, everything. They're the yeah. one yelling, going, we need the talent on set, we talent. need this here. Yeah. They're the yeah. one yelling. The AD has to <laughs> be able to yell a lot. Yell and coordinate. And coordinate. The, so what, what, if there's a, a second AD, what would a second AD do? So a second AD, because a sets get bigger, you can't be everywhere out at the same time. What? No, you can't. It's impossible. I mean, if News. everyone had these one wheels, maybe the film sets would be different. But what you never, there's such a delay yeah. on a film set when you're like, oh, where do we, where, where's the actor's hat? Or where's the right, other yeah. shirt? Or we need this person on set. And if you always sent the same person, or if the director left to go do yeah, that, yeah. or the first AD do, it You had to do time. everything yourself? Yeah, it's gonna take forever. And but the problem about it taking forever is it's fine when it's just you and I doing a project, yeah. you know, we, we might not have a deadline, or yeah. we have all day, but when you're on a big film set, it can cost more than $100,000 per hour. Yeah, so, so imagine there's like 200 people on set, and everybody is getting paid per hour, and so, as you're wasting time, you're just wasting money. You're wasting money. So tell me about the script supervisor. So script super, uh, so script supervisor. So it's hard to say. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it is. Script supervisor, also known as continuity, their job is to make sure that you're getting everything that's in the script, that that's all happening, and that there's actual continuity on screen. So when you do multiple takes of a scene, did the actor use their left hand to pick up the glass? Was their hat on forwards or backwards? There's little, little things that you want to make sure the continuity is the same for the film so that when the editor's there, he's not killing himself trying to make two shots work or so yeah. that the scene doesn't feel completely different. Right. Plain and simple. Plain Script and simple. supervisor. Script supervisor. All right, so then, then we got the DP. Why don't you explain DP? So DP, in my experience at least, he's the guy in charge of the camera department. Right? Yeah. Essentially. The like, image. The image, what it's actually gonna, I mean the, the director has vision and input into that, but the director of photography makes that vision happen, actually puts it, you know, films that, that thing. Exactly. So I may come to the DP as a director and say, I want the scene to feel really dark and moody, and what the DP will do with his skill set is he'll come and he'll talk to his whole team and he'll change the lighting, get the right lenses, and yeah. make it look the way the, the director has envisioned. Exactly. Well, you know, there's a huge collaboration between the AD, the DP, and the director. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and, and that, that collaboration changes depending on who those people are. Like, totally. Some director DP roles are totally different from other ones. Like you, There might be a lot of collaboration or the director will just be like, this is what's happening and this is the way we're doing it. And then the, the DP is just gonna be like, okay, I'll make it happen. Exactly. That's it. Um, and so beneath the DP, Matty, is the camera operator. Yep. Now, more and more because 
uh, of the way cameras are so accessible, people coming up as DPs are off the operators as well. Yeah. But on bigger film sets, or depending the film set, the DP might just focus on the image, and he'll have a camera operator who is the one who has the camera on his shoulder, the one who's operating the camera. There's a really cool YouTube video about Game of Thrones, which talks all only about just camera operators. Camera operators. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. It's a really cool video. I gotta check and, that out. Yeah, and it shows like how specific their role gets, and yeah. so yeah. So yeah, DP is in charge of it, but the the camera op will actually be holding the camera and doing what the DP wants, essentially. Yep. And then beneath him is the first assistant camera. Um, so the first AC. AC. First AC. First AC. And his job is usually, he's also called a focus puller. Okay. And so his job is primarily to make sure that the camera is in focus when you're rolling. So making, he operates the lens, he'll have a remote focus, but his job is to make sure that everything is sharp. Is the first AC setting up the camera? Yeah, he's setting up the camera alongside the second AC, but the second AC is the one who's running to get batteries. He's taking the memory cards to the... Getting a lens or getting something. Getting a lens. He's the runner. Just remember how the AD had a second AD to do the yeah. running for him. The first AC has a second AC who will do the running. So the camera operator will actually hold the camera, but before and after that, the AC will set up the camera, give it to the camera operator. Once you're done shooting, the AC, the first AC, will take that camera and then put it away once you're once you're done. Exactly. So I remember one, uh, one of my favorite ACs was when we were working on that one San Pellegrino commercial. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the, the AC was he had just come off of X-Men so he was legit and like I just loved walking on set he had set up the whole camera and everything and then as soon as we were ready to shoot without me even really like asking or knowing for it, it just all of a sudden <laughs> appeared the camera I'm like yeah. oh and then you know somebody would yell cut the director would yell, yell cut and then like camera was gone it's yeah. like Oh, well, that's great. Like, I was well, loving was, that. What was great was uh, in that shoot, we were like, we were directing, you were DPing, and we, yeah. we both got to like, then we could just focus on the shoot. Exactly. While he would bring the camera. Exactly. You didn't have to think, where am I going to put this camera now? Like, yeah. And you're tired and holding the camera. It's just like. And it was a long shoot. We were filming late at night. Yeah, long day. Shout out to David Stewart. That's the camera. That's the first assistant you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, He's yeah. amazing. He's worked on all the IMAX films. He actually taught me a lot as a camera assistant. Rad dude. All right, so what's the difference between gaffer and grip? So gaffer works with the electrical on the set. So they're the ones. So lights. So lights, yes. They're the ones powering the lights and they're the ones setting up the lights. They're t closely connected with the DP. So there will be the gaffer and then he'll have his team. That's where you hear the term best boy. That's the best boy, best role, best role. Right best there. Bro, yeah, I want my best boy. Um, so the best boy was beneath the gaffer and he's the one who, again, the gaffer's talking with the DP and the best boy will run and grab that. And then there's a, they're called them electrics or electricians. They're the ones running to set up all the cables because some lights need a lot of cabling and then you'll have a Jenny op, which is a generator. There's a big truck. It, I love all the lingo. Oh, there's so much. Set. Yeah, yeah. And so they got to lay out all the cable and so, yeah. Yeah, that's the gaffer is and there to work what's on the lighting. The, so what's the grip doing then? So the grip, he's there to facilitate the camera department, making okay. sure that all the camera movements are facilitated the way they need. A dolly. A dolly, or... the tripod. They'll they'll also help the gaffers by setting up light stands. The grip is all that that equipment that gets the camera moving and helps the lights be where they need to be. Boom. Yeah. Easy. So that's, so that's kind of the visual side, but then there's also the very important sound side. Sound side, yeah. And so on a documentary, usually I just have one guy. He's the sound recordist. He's our sound guy. He'll have his pack on the front of him and he'll have his boom mic. Big fanny pack. Yeah, great. exactly. And he's he's mixing as he's recording. Doing his thing. Now, if there's more people on set, in the case of Sam Pellegrino, we had two uh, two sound guys because one guy was in the other room mixing and the other sound guy was in there booming and he was also making sure all the mic packs So were he's in. got that boom, boom pull, got he, the mic and he's getting the audio and other guy's making sure it sounds good. Exactly. I could talk about this all day, Maddie. There's just so, the roles are <laughs> there's so, so many there's roles. so many roles, there's okay. so much. Okay, yeah. let's talk about PAs. PAs are, it, it sounds like kind of a lowly role, but no. they're super important. They're the blood. If, they, if we're talking about that body, they're the blood in the body. Yeah. They, they make things happen. PA, production Pro assistant. Production assistant. Now, you'll do anything as a PA. And the first thing they always ask you as a PA is, do you have your license? Because they want to know if you can go drive <laughs> to pick up coffees, to go grab that random thing that someone forgot. A battery, a battery. or something, whatever. Exactly. Sometimes maybe it's a fancy actor and you need to <laughs> double macchiato, pump. Whatever, whatever, blah, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. This, I Make don't sure you coffee. practice that, yeah. that skill. I'm sure Peter, whatever this skill is right here. This is this is making coffee. I'm sure Peter would, would keep me away from his coffee. <laughs> He'd be very disappointed. So yeah, no, the PAs, they'll do everything. I, I was a PA on a set once and I had to warn people that there was a cable on the ground because we were filming in a public place. It's an place. important role. It was, I was like, excuse me, there's cable. Because if that actor trips on that cable 
I'm, everything will stop. And I'm probably everything fired. Will, yeah, you, well that too. Blacklisted. <laughs> Never again will he PA or anything else on a film set. Never again. Excuse me, cable. <laughs> Sir, there's cable. Cable. Hi, ma'am, there's cable in front of you. Cable. You're tripping over a cable. Now, now my question is, did you ever not say cable? Um, there was a couple people who was like, this guy deserves to trip over a cable. <laughs> no, no, I made sure, that was, when I, that's the whole thing. When you're on a set, no matter how small your position is, don't disregard it. Work your hardest at that. People will notice. The people who I ask to come back on my set and the way I've got hired onto other jobs is by taking every job so seriously. Because if someone sees how serious you take warning people to that there's a cable on the ground, they're gonna know that you're gonna take the next role more serious and the next role more serious. Exactly, you can't, like if a PA can't do his job well and work hard, then you're not gonna give them, if they wanna do a camera op or an AC or something, you're not gonna give them that opportunity. You might not even give them another opportunity at PAing. Like there's a couple guys, um, I forget that where they, they grip or gaffer or whatever, but like they showed up a little bit late to set or something. I never saw that guy again. That was the last time I saw him. Like yeah. that's, you just don't hire those people. Those are like simple things like show up on time on set, come a little bit early yeah. and work hard, be, take self initiative, but also don't step into other people's roles, right? Like, yes. I, I think you have a good story about this. Yeah, right? I, I, you know, when you get onto sets where there's union rules and, and people have their very specific department, as they call it, you want to stick to your department. I remember I was uh, working on a job and it was actually the queen, the queen of England was coming in. Important. Very important, important actor, <laughs> actress. And she, uh, while we were waiting, there was a sound guy and unfortunately his system kept feedbacking and the speakers would be making screeching sounds. Horrible sounds. Horrible sounds and I knew the button on his deck would, would turn it off because I watched but, him but do it But you weren't all. part of the sound department. I was not part of the sound team. I was part of but the, you knew. the camera team because I watched him. It would happen. It kept happening throughout the day. Now he went out for a smoke break and what happened is the sound was going crazy and everyone's in there. The jur the press is there. Security's there. We're ears bleeding. Ears, our ears are bleeding. My eyes are, are <laughs> exploding. And I, and I just looked over and I'm seeing the thing on his sound control system. And I was you like, know what it I was is. Like, I know what it is. So I reached over and I turned it down. I thought I was going to be applauded as a hero. He came Wrong. into the room and saw me touching that. And man, I got an earful. I was put into my place. He came up and asked me, he goes, are you part of the sound team? I said, no. He goes, then don't touch the sound equipment. And you know, I in the moment I was like, whatever, man. Yeah, I didn't say anything. You're a loser. I know. In my mind, I think I was saying all that. Yeah. But, but I understand that because if I was a camera guy and some random person walked up and started touching the camera, they may think they're helping, but they yeah. actually may be interrupting. They might be messing up the whole. Like they might change a, a setting by accident, and then you're filming and you don't know that that setting changed, and it could be like detrimental exactly. to the whole commercial shoot or whatever it is. And it depends on the film set. On a documentary, when it's yeah, a smaller crew, it's, it's more, more fluid. fluid. Yeah. But as you go up, it's you want to take initiative, but you also want to make sure you're within your department. Exactly. Being good at your job is very important. It will get you hired. You got to study and get good at your job. But just as important is being reliable, but also being easy to work with. Yeah. You, if you're easy to work with and reliable, you'll get hired back in time and time again. 100%. I always say that, that that's the one thing that anybody can do. Yeah. Like everybody's born with different amounts of skills and talents and your experience or whatever, but everybody can be a hard worker and a good person to work with. Yeah. Like anybody. Right now you can do that. That's, that's totally up to you. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Um, okay, so there's like, we've gone through so many different roles and, and we're just talking about one unit. There might be a second or third or fourth unit film. Yeah. Like all these same roles are, are in those units. So there could be a bunch of different units working at the same time. Plus we're not even talking about stunt people, mm -hmm. like set design, production, makeup. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, all that. There's, there's, you have, you have your production design, then you have, you have uh, your so set many. dresser, you have your props master, you have it in this thing role called the greensman when you have like scenery and scenic stuff. If you like greenery, yeah, greensman. Greensman. There's also, you know, the animal handler on set. Like I, there's there's this one guy in Solid Toronto role. who's, I've seen him bring every type of animal to set. It's amazing. He's brought dogs to geckos. All you gotta do is really, you just look at the credits on a movie and you realize how many freaking roles there are. There's just so many Absolutely. roles that you would, you would never have any idea even exist. Um, and I think that's really the point of this video is to give you guys a sense of like how many roles there are on a film set. That you, there's so many things that you don't know that you could be doing on a film set. So don't just think that there's a director and a DP, a guy behind the camera and a, and a sound guy. There's so many people on a set that, that 
that have a really vital part and that you could be a part of. And that's the exciting thing is you can try any of them. I, I've been many different roles and you don't have to worry that if you're trying something out that you're gonna stay there for the rest of your life. What, what's the most random random role you've had? Um, I was a clapper loader once. What the heck is a clapper <laughs> loader? Well, when you used to shoot on film cameras, um, which we still do, we have to load the film into its mag or its magazine. So you do that in the dark and then you take that out or you do it in a change bag and you take that out and you have to load that onto the camera. But then also you have to use the slate. And so that was the clapper loader. So you'd be, that's the idea, it's clapping, you have the slate. Scene one, take two, Al Alpha Bravo. <laughs> Mark it. So, which is now sometimes a clapper loader is just, called uh, a, a third assistant or whatever, you okay. know. But you would never call it that because there isn't any film when you're shooting digital. So there's nothing to really load besides a memory card, which doesn't take much time. And you're, I mean, you're still clapping, but that's the second assistant. When you're clapping, you're slating. But you can't clap. We can clap. Clap all day. There are so many roles on a film set. It's, it's mind boggling, but um, I think this is gonna end up being a really long video. So why don't we just go like ride one wheels or something like Love that, it. I think. Let's do it. All right. So how'd you like it? I, I enjoyed it. I, I get it now. They're super fun. I want a wheel instead of feet now. <laughs> Man, thanks so much for like giving us all that information and that ah, tidbits of goodness. No problem. I think there, you know, there's so many exciting roles in filmmaking. The sky's the limit. And uh, yeah, I think there's one perfect for you. Now, the question is, who thinks that Mark should start his own YouTube channel? I don't know what it's gonna be about or what it would be about, but but who thinks that he sh you should leave a thumbs up comment if you think Mark should start his own YouTube channel about filmmaking or something else? What do you think about that? I, I think it would be super fun. You know, I'm a director and I would love to talk about life and everything that I work on and give some behind the scenes. Maybe if you'd want behind the scenes on industry commercials, but yeah, let me know. I think a lot of people would benefit from your knowledge. So I, I, I'm, I am thumbs up for, for the YouTube channel. And if you want, go and check out Mark's work. Uh, you can actually check out the documentary we made together yeah. or, or Mark did most of the work, but I just helped DP some of it. Um, that was a fun time, super good. Um, check out his Instagram. Yeah, I don't know. The just, website. Yeah, website, website. Yeah. You have, do, do people go to websites these days? I, I still do, you know, I'm 31, I guess. <laughs> I still still log on to the Google and check out websites. Uh, would you be my first subscriber, Maddie? All right, man, it was good hanging out. Yeah. We should do this again. I would love that. I would love to take one of these home, and I'm going to. Uh, right. No, you are yeah. not. Yeah. Put that down. Thanks. Put Thanks that this down. Was, uh, this was great, man. Put it down. It. Put no, it down. Good. Love you, Put man. it down. Right, Put it down. Time.